cargo documentation. We all know trade between two business firms located in different countries begins with the conclusion of an export contract. Under the contract, the duty of the exporter is to ship the contracted goods in the agreed form, x for example packing, and by agreed mode of transport as well as according to agreed time schedule. In this lesson, we will study the need of documentation, master document and standardized document. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss the need of documentation, define master document, describe the standardized document and explain principal documents. Documentation formalities are necessary to enable the importer to get the contracted goods and the exporter to get sale value as well as to secure export incentives. In other words, export documents are needed to comply with commercial, legal and incentive requirements. For commercial perspective purpose, physical possession of the good will be linked with the acceptance of a payment document by the importer. In actual practice, a set of documents given proof of shipment and cargo insurance coverage along with a bill of payment is sent by exporter to the importer through the banking channel. Besides commercial necessity, documents for exports have a legal perspective. All over the world, laws regulating export-import trade as well as movement of foreign exchange has been enacted. In some countries, the regulations are few which are enforced through simple procedural and documentation formalities. In other countries, the regulations are many and the enforcement procedures are complex. Documents are needed for protecting the economic and social interest of the trading countries. Documents are also needed for fulfilling requirements under bilateral and multilateral trade agreements. Export assistance and incentive measures have become an integral part of policy in large number of countries. Since these incentives are to be given only to export activity, documentary proof to this effect is required to be given by the claimant to the disbursing authorities. The application is to be accompanied by a number of supporting documents to enable the incentive disbursing authority to check the authenticity of the details given in the application. A system which provides an alternative to the repetitive, unproductive and time-consuming work necessitated by the exporter compulsion to prepare separately a number of documents all containing practically the same information. This system is known as the aligned documentation system. The two master documents, one for commercial use and the other for regulatory documents meant for customs, RBI and port trust have maximum advantage of alignment and minimum cost and time for preparing individual documents. The two master documents contain all the information that was common to individual documents. Earlier there were a plethora of commercial documents which include among others invoice, packing, list intimation for inspection insurance, declaration form, shipment advice and the exchange control declaration form. The standard documents are invoice, commercial invoice or pro forma invoice, packing list, certificate of origin, bill of lading, shipping order, mates receipt, shipping bill, port trust document, marine insurance, declaration form, marine insurance certificate, airway bill, post parcel receipt, bill of exchange and bill of entry. Each of these documents can be reproduced from the same master by using the relevant mask. Reproduced signatures on individual documents may indeed present some problem. Until an agreement is reached among all concerned as to their acceptability, it would be necessary to mask the signature column also on the master and to sign the individual documents manually. Pro forma invoice is the starting point of the export contract and is in the form of offer made by the exporters to the foreign customer. Export invoice is a document of content. It's the exporters bills for goods and set forth the terms of sale. The invoice is a basic document. The exporter should strictly follow the requirements of the importer in regard to invoicing. Packing list may be shown on invoice or separately and should contain item by item 
the contents of cases or containers or of a shipment with its weight and description set forth in such a manner as to permit checks of the contents by the customs on arrival at the port of destination as well as by the recipient. Certificate of origin certifies that place of the origin of the merchandise besides the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, EPCs and various other trade associations have been authorized by Government of India to issue certificates of origin. A bill of lading is a document issued and signed by a shipping company or its agents acknowledging that the goods mentioned in the bill of lading have been duly received for shipment or shipped on board a vessel and undertaking to deliver the goods in the like order and the condition as received to the consignee or the bill of lading have been duly paid. When the cargo is loaded on the ship, the commanding officer of the ship will issue a receipt called the mate receipt for goods. The mate receipt is first handed over to the port trust authorities so that all port dues are paid by the exporter to the port trust. After making payment of all port dues, the merchant or the agent will collect the mate receipt from the port dues. The merchant or the agent will collect shipping agent only after the mate receipt has been obtained. Shipping bills required by the customs. It is only after the shipping bill is stamped by the customs the cargo is allowed to be carted to the docks. To facilitate identification of different category of shipping bills, it will be desirable to introduce uniform color schemes at all the ports. One of the common methods of payments in international trade involves the use of bills of exchange, B oblique E, also known as drafts provide documentary evidence of obligation and financial risk of the transaction is more widely spread. Mate's receipt is a receipt issued by the commanding officer of the ship when the cargo is loaded on the ship. The mate's receipt is a prima facie evidence that the goods are loaded in the vessel. In air carriage, the transport documents is known as the airway bill, AWB. Post parcel receipt, PPR, evidences merely the receipt of goods exported through postal channels to the buyer. Cargo insurance policy, also called marine insurance policy, provides protection to cargo owners in the event of loss or damage to cargo in transit. Combined transport document, CTD, is a document for multimodal movement of goods in container. The bill of entry is a document prepared by the importer or his clearing agent in the prescribed form under Bill of Entry Regulations 1971, on the strength of which clearance of imported goods can be made. When goods are imported in a particular country, the importer has to pay the necessary import duty. The Statement of Facts is a document which can be central to many disputes between owners and charterers and others, as this is the document where relevant facts are recorded and sequence of events can be followed. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The two master documents are normally provided out of which one is for commercial use and the other for truck loader. Right or wrong? Wrong. Bill of lading is not a standard document. Right or wrong? Wrong. Bill of exchange bridges the time gap between the shipment of goods and the receipt of sale amount. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Documentation formalities are necessary to enable the importer to get the contracted goods and the exporter to get sale value as well as to secure export incentives. In other words, export documents are needed to comply with commercial, legal and incentive requirements. Every country has its own laws governing imports and exports. Consequently, the exporter has to comply with laws in his country through documentary formalities. At the same time, he has to send some documents to the importer, which will enable him to take possession of the goods after getting permission from the concerned government department, that is, the customs authorities. The two master documents contain all the information that was common to individual documents. Invoice is a document of content. It's the exporter's bill for goods and sets forth the terms of sale. Post parcel receipt, PPR, 
evidences merely the receipt of goods exported through postal channels to the buyer. It does not evidence the title to goods.